Hello kids, here again to work a little bit on natural science. Today we are going to study and to know a little bit more about complex machines, okay? Complex machines are made up with simple machines working together. They make our lives easier. This is exactly the same that happens at school. When we work one by one, we can make plate of things. But what happens when we work like a group, when we work together? We help each other and we can have better results. We can do lots of things more than if we are working alone. This is exactly what happens with machines. If we put lots of simple machines working together as a team, we can have better results, we can have more useful tools, and we can have more options in technology to make our lives easier, to have better possibilities to work and to do efforts, okay? So remember, a complex machine is a mixture or a group of simple machines working together. These simple machines, uh, or in, in this group of simple machines, we can find mechanical components, mechanical components, okay? What are mechanical components? They are simple machines that transmit movement. Remember that we used levers to lift objects, as the same as pulleys. When we needed to lift objects that were very heavy, we used pulleys. We also had inclined planes to push or to pull objects in an easier way. Well, today we are going to work on simple machines that are used, instead of lifting loads, they are used to transmit movement, to pass movement from one piece or from one component to another, okay? When we have many of these mechanical components working together, they form complex machines. When we have these mechanical components working together, they form complex machines. So what we are going to study today are the different elements, the different components we have in the mechanical components to work in complex machines to transmit movement. This is the main object, the main goal of this, uh, of these simple machines, okay, to transmit movement. So we can find four of them. Cranks, the word for crank in Spanish is manivela. We have gears, the word for gears in Spanish is engranajes. We have cogs in chain, that it should be like um, cogs is this, okay, rueda dentada, this is a cog, okay, it's a wheel, but it has a kind of teeth on it, this, these are the cogs, okay. So, cogs in chain is what would usually say in Spanish cadena. But referring to bicycles, for example, la cadena de la bicicleta. These are cogs and chains. And finally, we have rack and cog. That is the way we usually say cremallera in Spanish. Not like the one that you use when you are sipping your coats, okay? It's more like the cremallera of the car, la cremallera de un coche, or other vehicles, okay? Let's see an example of every one of them. First of all, we are going to start with that crank. That is very, very useful. I've got this milk shaker, okay? This is going to, uh, this is a tool to make um, milkshakes, you know? That's, I put inside the milk and the cacao and a little bit of sugar. I need to mix it up, okay? What I'm going to do with this tool that has a crank. Look at the movement. I have the crank. This is my hand and it's the one that is going to make the movement. And I'm going to transmit the movement from my hand to the shaker. When I take the crank and I turn it around, look what happens down. I'm not touching this part, however, it's moving because we have a mechanism here that transmits movement from my crank to this stick to shake the milk. Can you see it properly? Okay, this is a clear example about how to transmit movement without effort. If I had to make it move very quickly doing this, steering with my hand, 
it will be difficult it will be painful here and it will have to be like this all the time very quickly very quickly and it could be very very difficult however if i use a crank look what happens can you see it would be impossible for my hand to do that that movement it will be very very difficult and all the milk will be exploding over uh, everywhere and it will be really complicated to me to, to make a milk shake however as i have this with my crank i can make it move very very quickly without effort it's very 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 simple okay i don't know if you can see it better like this okay so this is how cranks work very useful isn't it okay then we have gears okay what are gears gears are a group of cogs working together i have two cogs a yellow cog and a red cog okay these are the cogs this is like a cog wheel what happens? I'm going to make these two things transmit just move without touching them. Okay, using this simple machine. I've got this surface in here. Okay, I've got this in here. And I'm going to transmit the movement from this cup to this one. Okay. I've got here a kind of crank okay and look what happens when i have my hand and i turn the crank i'm making the yellow cog spin without touching i'm transmitting the movement from my fingers do you see my fingers my fingers are moving and i'm transmitting the movement from my fingers to the yellow cog thanks to the cogs. Look at the direction. Meanwhile, the red cog is turning around clockwise. The yellow is just doing the opposite. It's going just opposite the clockwise. Look to it. Can you see the movement in a different direction? If I had another extra one here, the third cog would move the same movement, the same direction, as the red one so it's like one yes no yes no yes no yes to understand okay they change so this is one direction this is the opposite same direction the opposite same direction the opposite and so on this way i can transmit movement from one place to another this is usually the mechanical components that in the old days the watches and the clocks had inside nowadays you use digital watches but in the past, when we had the analogic clocks and the analogic watches, inside they had very, very, very tiny gears making move with the system the hands. You know that the watches or the clocks, like the one we have at school, have the hands, the one for the minutes and the one for the hours. The way to make those hands to move all around the clock were produ was produced, that movement, mo that movement, was produced thanks to gears okay sometimes i need to move something different for example when i have a bicycle i have one wheel here and another wheel here they are not in contact and i need to transmit the movement so we have another invention instead of using gears and granages we use cogs and chains but basically it's more or less the same as this but in this situation, I can't show you because I don't have a chain, but I'm going to try to make you understand more or less. What happens is that if I have a cog chain in here, all around, all around my, my um, cogs, okay, as I make one cog move, the chain will move the other gear too. If you have a bicycle at home, okay you can you can try it and you can see what i'm talking about when you have this example i have the chain here and as i move in this it pulls from the chain the chain turns around and makes this cock to move too okay so 
It's quite similar, cogs and chain are quite similar to gears, but they are not touching. The movement is transmitted by the chain instead of by the cogs directly. And finally, we have a rack and cog, what is called a cremallera. Wow, this is incredible. Do you know what's this? Can you guess? No? Well, I'll tell you. This is the component you have inside a DVD, um, a DVD player, okay? When you have DVDs at home and you put your DVDs on the machines, well, this is what is inside. I will try to show you that if I have the movie, okay, or the CD, I will display the CD here inside and it would be, yes, more or less in here. Okay, the surface that you can see here is read by this light. This is a laser light that reflects on this surface and produce the images. Okay, well, we have something really easy, this mechanical uh, components to put the DVD in the right place. When I introduce it, okay, it has to go to the correct place to be reproduced. Well, look what happens. I've got here these cogs. And look, look at the white part. Meanwhile, I'm doing this. Can you appreciate that the white part is moving to the right? And if I keep, yes, making this wheel spin and turn around, can you see the cogs? And can you see the white part going to the left? Let's see it again. Right. Left. Right, left. Can you appreciate the movement here? Well, I don't know if you can see it properly, but when I'm doing this, there is a part in here that goes down or up, down or up to lift the CD or to make it going down to the right position. I don't know if you can appreciate it in here, but what I'm doing when I'm working on this is to make in this part to go up and down. Here I've got another one. To reproduce the DVD, I need the light to move for all, um, not for, to move over all the DVD surface. I need this light to move. Okay, how I'm going to do it? Again, using a rack and cock. Here you see the two cocks you have a yellow one and you have a white one okay and this is double i have cocks in here okay and also i've got cocks in i have in here and in here like if i have can you appreciate it okay look what happens when i'm just spinning the yellow cock can you see that this part is disappearing Yes, now I'm going to make it appear again. Can you see how it appears? A luster light to read the DVD. Okay, I'm going to show you on the other side. This is the light, this is the reader. This is the real reader of the DVD, the one that reads the information that is recorded on the surface. And I want, I want the light to go all around the DVD to reproduce the images. Look what happens when I'm just spinning the, if you can appreciate here my, my finger behind my thumb finger, you see that I'm just turning around the cog, the gear, and you can see that the lens is moving now to the right, and here, yes, the opposite. I'm making it move to the left. Give me a couple of seconds to show you how it works. Okay. You've got here the movement. So, while the light is moving all around, 
is reading the information that is recorded on their surface. The light reflects in it and transmits the information. This is how we can watch movies on television when we have a DVD. When we put the DVD in the DVD player and we reproduce it and we watch it on the television. Well, inside a part of digital technology, for example, the one that you have here with the laser, also we have mechanical technology because really to make the to put the, the DVD inside the player, we need these mechanical components that make parts going up and down and just they are helping the CD to move and to go to the right place to be read, to be read by the laser. And also we need the laser to move all around the DVD and we use these mechanical components. Again, I show you here the rack and crack here you can see it. Okay, it's a rack, cremallera, because it is not round. It's not like a wheel. You see, it's totally straight. Okay, it's straight, but I can see how it works. So, now I have a challenge for you. Uh, can you find more objects in your daily life, on your toys, inside your toys, or inside your tools in the kitchen, or even in your parents' cars? Can you find more other um, mechanical components like this? Where can you find more components? In some toys, like this, I can see it inside, but it's the same. When I push it in, in the back end, well, let's... And it can walk alone. Okay, all these kind of toys, probably you have at home, inside have a system of gears and racks and cocks making the wheels move. So that's all. I would like you to practice at home and to try to look in your daily life objects, in your daily life tools, this kind of mechanical components. I hope everything is clear, but if not, you know you always can contact us in our emails or with the video conferences to solve any questions you may have. Okay, enjoy, bye.